I want to say welcome to you, Miss Edie, and to everyone. If it's your first time, or even if it's you know you've been here each time that we come every Thursday night, just welcome. I'm glad that you're able to join us tonight. Um, again, my name is Sean Trees, and I'll be your gracious host. <laughs> um, anyone want to do a quick prayer to open us up? Let me just take. Ms. Edie, do you want to lead us in prayer to open us up? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'm sitting here, the Holy Spirit, like, just pray. I'm like, no, God, it's my first time here. Let me just <laughs> I'm like, I'm probably be doing enough talking. Let me sit down somewhere. <laughs> Amen. Well, Amen. Right. I'm learning. I'm learning to just go with the flow. So, so here we are. Um, so if you guys can just, um, you know, close your eyes if it feels comfortable for you and just Humble your hearts as we welcome the spirit and dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for this space. We thank you for all the women who are gathered here right now, all those who will be gathered. We thank you for this space that was created months ago, God, when individuals were seeking solace, when they were seeking connection, God, we thank you for this fearless and faithful leader, Marcia, God. We thank you for her vision and how she was obedient to the vision and the, and the word that you placed in her heart. Lord, I'm asking right now that you would take anything out of my heart, my mind, my spirit that did not come from you. I pray for receptivity for all of our hearts that we might be able to commune, commune with one another, that we might be able to share our challenges. Lord, you said in your word that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, God. So we pray that we can overcome, continue to overcome by sharing our experience, strength, and hope tonight on this line. We thank you for all that you have done in each of our lives and all that you continue to do. We thank you for sustaining us. We pray for all that myself and the individuals who have left their jobs. We pray for what we're about to walk into. We thank you for your provision. We thank you that you are our ultimate provider, God. We ask that you would continue to keep us and cover us, continue to lead us and guide us in all that it is that we do. We pray that you would help us to be able to be, to have pure motives, to be able to hear your voice and to be able to be obedient to it. God, we thank you. And we ask these and all blessings in your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, for sure. Thank you for, thank you for asking me. Because yeah. I, I was like, uh-huh. Because <laughs> right, in you my know. head, I was like, um, Lord, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> Um, but no, and yes, we thank you for coming. You know, we know that this is your, your first time um, with Marcia's you know, Zoom talk. She has been doing this for two years now. And we're actually getting ready to have our second, you know, annual conference. That April is so 9th. exciting. Yes. So it should be fun. I mean, you know, it's three days. Um, it'll be virtual. And the last day will be also be virtual and in person. Hmm. So we're definitely excited to see what God will do. You know, how many doors he'll continue to open. People hmm. that we get to kind of touch and bless, you know, with his, with his word. Amen. Yeah, I saw I saw that she um was going to do the virtual conference. I have some other engagements, but I'm going to try to make it on at least one of the nights because it, it seems like it's going to be a lot of powerful uh, folks there. So um, I'm excited for you guys. And I mean, I have been um I, I don't know how she and I began to follow each other, um, but when she reached out to me and I, I she told me a little bit more about it, I was like, wow, like this is amazing. I hadn't necessarily realized that she had it going on for so long. So this is awesome. Um, I'm, I'm glad to, to engage with you ladies tonight and I'm gonna definitely try my best to, to get on as often as I can. As you can see, I'm still at work. So I work, I work second shift. So um, with me leaving this job, soon I'll have some more availability in the evening so I, I should be able to, to come on some more in the future. So thank you so much for having me everyone. Yes, yes. Listen, work never stops, right? <laughs> Whether it be at work, actually, or at home doing something. Exactly. You know, your family, it's always, you know, some type of work. But no, I'm definitely excited. But I mean, I definitely want to know more about you. I know that you're a therapist, right? Mm -hmm. And an author and an educator. But, you know, just tell us more about, about you and what you do. Sure. Um, so my name is Edie King. Um, I was born and raised in Philadelphia. So I know you guys are probably all over the country. I think Marcia said so. Born and raised in Philly. Um, I recently, my husband and I, we bought a house about a year and a half ago in Delaware. So if you 
know PA Delaware right right across the uh, right across the state line from one another. Um, so I am um, I am a therapist. I've been a therapist for just about eight nine years. Um, so much of my um, much of my work in therapy is started as a drug and alcohol counselor, and that's that's been the bulk of it. Um, and if you know anything about drug and alcohol, most of it is trauma. Um, so I'm, I identify as definitely a trauma therapist. Um, and then everything else that falls underneath there, depression, anxiety, grief, loss, and everything that comes along with the substance abuse world. Um, and about three years ago, I branched off into the private practice world, and I've been doing that pretty consistently in the middle of the pandemic. So I guess like mid-2020, I started my own private practice. So I do that. Um, and then I'm also an adjunct professor at Eastern University. Um, I'm a proud aunt of 14 nieces and nephews. I think 14. I think it might be 15. <laughs> so very, very big on family. I have seven siblings. Um, I am the sixth of the eight. Um, and funny story. My mom, she got her tubes tied and burnt after me and they unraveled. So I have a, a, a brother that's 10 years younger than me and a sister that's 13 years younger than me. So I'm, I'm, I'm little sister, I'm big sister, and I'm also like mom to them. So, so very family oriented. Um, don't have any children of my own, but I do have uh, five, I think six godchildren. It's just my girlfriends are having them and they like, you got mom. I'm like, I guess, you know. So um, family, family is huge for me. Um, I'm definitely a, a believer. Um, I've been a Christian my entire life and, you know, and coming into adulthood, just learning what it means to rededicate and recommit in my relationship with God and, and being an active participant in that. Um, so that's something, my faith is something that's that's very important for me and, and just incorporating it, understanding how how all-encompassing it is um, for the work that I do, for the relationships that I build. Um, I'm trying to think. See, I ask people this all the time, but when people ask me, I'm like, what else? Um, right. I authored a book um, in 2020. Um, my book is called My Peace is Most Important. So it's a devotional style book. It's a 31-day devotional. So some reading and journaling along with that. So um, we'll, I'll share about that a little bit more later, but ultimately it's, it's, it's just, you know, learning to find our peace to Mr. Storm. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that that is all about me. If you have, and I, I'm, I try to be an open book. So if you guys have any other questions about the work that I do or, or just me in general, um, definitely shoot, shoot for it. Yeah, no, that, thank you. Cause that <laughs> you're doing a lot. <laughs> It's you know, me needing to, to, to scale back in some things, you know? Yeah, yeah. But you know, I feel like, you know, God's placed you where he's, he needs you to be right yeah, sure. counseling in general, whether, you know, whatever topic that it does cover is so important mm -hmm. because, you know, there's people out here hurting every single day and, you know, mm -hmm. they're not necessarily open to talk about those struggles, you know, and they figure, mm -hmm. oh, I'm just going to struggle in silence because no one's really going to understand me sure. or, you know, how am I supposed to go on if maybe I'm the only person going through it, but they're not, you know, mm -hmm. We're not in this world alone. Yeah. You know, we're not here. God doesn't want us to struggle alone. You know, mm -hmm. he's put people out here to to help us. And he is definitely using you as one of those those people. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but for tonight, so I'm a little excited to talk about this. <laughs> right. So it says navigating and getting free from unhealthy relationships, aka yes, situationships. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So um, I mean, I, I was asking Marcia, like, I'm like, well, what's the format? Should I, should, you know, should I prepare something? So, I mean, considering the fact that it, it's it's only a handful of us, um, I did prepare something small, but that can just really be used as a guide. It doesn't, I'm not like super formal when I, when it comes to facilitating and presenting, I'm just, I'm, I'm here in, per, we ain't in person physically, right. but you right. know, right. I'm, I'm just really interested in the conversation and us all learning and growing from one another. Yes, I might be a therapist, but I'm not not an expert on anybody else's life. I'm barely an expert on my own, you know? So I just try, I share what I know, nothing that we have. I believe nothing that we have is our own, especially in this kingdom. So I'm just sharing what I know, um, sharing what I've learned. And, you know, I'm, I'm open to hearing what you guys have, have learned as well, just like in your experiences with, with relationships and navigating them. Um, so yeah, Sean Trust, if you, how, how, how do you want to, to do it? Um, I'm going to have like a few questions kind of to guide me too, so that I don't go on a, <laughs> on a, tangent. On a little tangent, that's cool. right, to keep us kind of <laughs> focused, you know, but like I said, we're open to kind of talk about anything, I mean, sure. all of us are, I mean, I know for myself, I am a little bit introverted and kind of mm -hmm. shy, but 
mm-hmm. I will ask kind of how things, you know, kind of strike me. Um, but yeah, we can just. Well, it sounds that. like you're doing well at the <laughs> introversion. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> no, not a problem. Not yeah, a problem. Yeah. We can just um, have a conversation and just, you know, kind of, we'll just let it flow. You know, Go from it. there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Starting would be what is a situation? What is a situation? Okay. Um, so I think. I think when we hear it, um, and, and especially in, in today's culture, I think when we hear it, we might all have a, an understanding maybe of what it is, right? Some people might have never heard it before. Well, actually, raise your hand if you've heard that terminology before, or put a one in the chat if you've heard the terminology before, situationship. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. For the most part, we know we know what it is, right? Or we, we've at least heard of it. Um, so obviously the, this definition that I came up with is not Webster or anything like that, but the best way that I can explain it, it is a usually a romantic relationship, um, some type of romantic involvement with another person where there isn't a lot of clearly defined guidelines or boundaries, um, maybe not any exclusivity, um, within the relationship. So it's just kind of like, you know, this, 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 this loose agreement, if you will, within the relationship. Um, but we acting like we in a relationship, right? We acting like we, we boyfriend and girlfriend or, you know, partners or however you, whatever label you want to put on it. Um, a lot of the expectations, a lot of the involvement is as if you are exclusive, you know, so sometimes sex might be involved. Sometimes the frequency of interacting with one another, we seeing each other every day or we're texting and talking to one another all throughout the day or I'm at your house you're at my house we might know each other's families we we may have had these shared experiences so all these different things that make it feel like a relationship but it's not you know because we we haven't put that label on it either we haven't made that decision we haven't had that conversation where we've made a decision that we are exclusively boyfriend and girlfriend I'm not with anyone else you're not with anyone else we're moving forward towards something else um it just hasn't happened yet. Um, so, so that's, that's probably, that's like my idea of what a situation ship is. And I'm open. Does that feel accurate for you guys? Put a one in the chat if it feels, if that seems about right, as far as like your experiences. Right. <laughs> And, and so I'll, I'll say this as well. So um, raise your hand or put, put a two in the chat if you have been a part of a situation shit. And I, I'm going to be the, I might put a few twos. In. <laughs> so if, you, if you've been involved in, and even if you're even currently involved in, right, there's no, there's no shame, there's no condemnation, right? I think like ultimately, ultimately my goal is to, to help us gain more awareness about what these things, not only what it is, but like, if, if we're going to be in it, having some conscious awareness of it, right? So like, we're, I ain't no victim. I was part of it. I was, <laughs> I was eight in the betting, you know? So I'm, I'll be the first to say, like, I was in the three and a half year situation ship. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> three and a half years. Right. And, and I was, I, I knew, right. But, um, and, and we'll probably get into this a little bit later, but like, you know, but sometimes, or at least I'll speak for myself, I thought I was the exception to the rule. Like, oh, you you don't want to go, you don't, we not together. Okay. So I could just wait or I can change you or I can change your mind, you know? So a lot of times we might know, but we might not really be, or at least I wasn't living in conscious reality, right? So I'm like, oh, it is what it is, right? Like we just going with the flow. At least I'm getting the crumbs, right? Like I'm not sitting at the table, of of what what I, what I actually wanted because I knew I, I knew I wanted a full relationship I knew I wanted a title I knew I wanted all the the things because we I was experiencing the bits and pieces I didn't have the 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 official um aspect the official title of the relationship right there was this withholding of it and he was clear about where he was right but I was the one that was willing to accept it right so my mouth say I'm willing. But in my heart, now I'm, 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 I'm building, I'm having some resentment and now I'm, now I'm, now I'm heartbroken and I'm breaking my own heart because I'm choosing, right? So like I said, we're not a lot of times, once we come into that reality of knowing what this is, I'm not a victim anymore. Like I'm a willing participant now. Um, so ultimately like my goal, and this is kind of like one of my, I wouldn't say specialties, but like an, it's becoming kind of like a niche of mine within my practice because uh, this is common and this, and this is both genders, like both men and women, right? 
um, you know, in relationships where they don't, where, where they're not really getting what they want and they don't really know how to communicate, hey, this is what I want without feeling the fear of losing the person or feeling the fear of rejection. So all these different reasons as to like why we sometimes stay in it because like, hey, like, let me just take what I can get type of thing. Um, so ultimately, like a lot of times my goal is just like, well, let's gain some awareness about what's going on and maybe how did we get here and what do we really want and what does it mean to let go? You know, so exploring those things. Um, so uh, Jeanette G, uh, she said in the chat, we're actually coming out of it now, deciding to move forward and make it in a row. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And that's amazing, right? When we can have those conversations with the person we're involved with and it, it, it successfully moved into, into another level, right? That's that's ideal because it's like, hey, we both still, we get, we, we get to stay together. All right, okay, you was receptive. I, I said what I, I, I said what I needed to say. I communicated my needs and it got met. Wow. Right. Thank God. You know, so that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, congratulations on that. Um, um, any, so any, what, what was your next question? I'm, I'm feeling, so we got, we understand what a situation is. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, it, it feels so real, you know, it feels like, oh, well, this, we, we just kicking it, you know? So um, I did have like on the, the slide that I put together, um, I said in situationship, it could be called situationship. Also see, we're just talking or let's see where this goes or we're just kicking it or, you know, oh, that's my little buddy or, oh, friends with benefits, all those different names and synonyms, right? Like we know it, we've lived it. Um, so yeah, that's that's more or less what, what it is. Um, yeah, and I totally agree, right? Because I think in anything that we do, whether it be a situationship, friendships, relationships, it's that effective communication that mm -hmm. we Absolutely. Yeah not clear then you're not coming across to the, to the other person it's like well I don't really know where we stand mm -hmm. I we said at this place but mm -hmm. somebody asked, well what are you be like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know I, I, I gotta go run back and ask him because I'm, I'm not I'm not clear <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, you know what I never even thought about that so right. yeah and right. sometimes it, it does just happen right I think in today's culture with social media and online dating so many different ways that we just get wrapped up we just we get caught up you know and we we fill in the vibes and whatever it is right we we're human we're social animals so it's very easy to just like fall into something and not have that awareness of it until we few months in it's just like oh wow and uh, and then you go introduce them to your mama mama this is my boyfriend and he living at your boyfriend <laughs> and now you now you heart broke <laughs> now you sad <laughs> So, so yes, I, I, I definitely think communication is the biggest piece of it. Absolutely. So I think like when we're in the thick of it, right, how do we tell if it's unhealthy? Um, I think that's a really good question. Mm. Hmm. I think it's another, uh, a, a number of ways and, um, I can, we can go over some, just some aspects of unhealthy relationships in a minute. Um, so I think it's a, a number of different ways, but one of the, one of the telltale signs is if, you, if, if you aren't on the same page with the person, right? Like if you want one thing and it's obvious that they want another thing. Um, and sometimes we, sometimes before we communicate it, we can assume that the person wants something different, but kind of like what Jeanette just shared, like, oh, maybe after she communicated, hey, like I'm actually interested in being official. Then he, he was like, oh yeah, me too. You know, so it, 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 you you start to know it's unhealthy when you realize that you just aren't where where there's this clash of of wants or needs or desires. Um, so even after maybe after you've communicated it, kind of like in my case, you know he was he was clear like that's not what he wanted. You know I was choosing to still be in there, so that that's automatically unhealthy because we we're on different pages. You know so I'm. I'm, I have this, this idea in mind, so I'm going this way, and you have another idea in mind, so you're going this way, so it's, it's not, we can't really work out, right? Um, I think some other factors, um, you know, in addition to not being on the same page, so maybe if there's like a lack of transparency of, of just like, you know, 
if sex, especially if sex is involved, like we need to be transparent about whether or not you have other sex partners, right? And like, are we use all those different things? So like a lack of transparency. And, and this is tricky because it's like, well, you're not my, you're not my boyfriend. I ain't got to tell you what else I'm doing. That's sometimes the mindset, right? Like I don't have to text you all the time. I don't have to do all these different things, right? So again, that's why having the foundation of communication is really important. Um, Poor communication is, a, is, is, a, is another big factor. Any type of abuse, definitely hands down, any type of abuse, whether it be physical, verbal, emotional, mental, any type of abuse are, it's, it's, it's definitely unhealthy. And then just like unclear expectations, you know, and, and I think that kind of like goes along with the theme of, you know, the, the importance of communication. Um, and if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen for a second and just kind of like identify a few different unhealthy signs. And Maybe you guys can identify, can you um, either make me host or allow the screen sharing, Chantras, please? Okay, let me see. <laughs> okay, yep, it did, thank it you. Did okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, okay, let's go. All right, so. Here are some other signs of unhealthy uh, relationships, right? And this this might be in a situationship, or this might just be in a even in an exclusive relationship. So, um, feeling anxious around the other person, feeling overwhelmed, feeling trapped, where there might be mistrust, abuse, constant checking of the phone, right? So, again, that transparency. I think you know you you have to be clear about your expectations around privacy around you know access to someone else's phone that's somebody's personal property so you're not we're not none of us are entitled to any of those things right um over jealousy wanting to know where that person is all the time not having choices stalking criticism isolation accusing being accused of cheating or accusing that person of cheating actual cheating manipulation lying control erratic behavior obsessive behavior so a lot of these things they 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 kind of pair up with one another you know because if I think he's lying now I'm acting crazy now I need to check your phone now I need to do all these things right. now I'm sitting outside your house at right. three o'clock in the morning <laughs> because you didn't answer your phone right so like a lot of these things are are connected and I'm not I'm not saying that there is a, a one fell like one big answer to all of these but if I could if there had to be one it's communication from the jump, you know, being clear, having clear expectations, having some clear communication from the, from the start of the relationship. Um, and then this one, it kind of, they're, they're kind of just like summaries of some of the ones from above, but if there are some controlling aspects in the relationship on either side from, from either gender, right. Cause this isn't, this isn't just only about men, right. This isn't about, you know, oh, men are narcissists or all those, cause that, that rhetoric, bothers me because there are there are there's a such thing as male toxic um toxic masculinity and I think there's a such thing as toxic femininity right like a lot of times we as even as women you know we we can be some master manipulators right even like in the bible a few women was manipulating right so like to get to get what they want and sometimes because as women, we are better verbal communicators in a lot of cases than men, we can say what we need to say, right? We can get the waterworks going. So this is, this is, this can be unhealthy on either side. So um, later on, I'll talk about, you know, like some of the ways to, to get to navigate and get free and different things like that. And one of the biggest things is going, we got to get honest with ourselves, right? So like I said, like, I was, I was a willing participant after a while, maybe that first year, maybe I was kind of like naive and, and unsure and, and I wasn't asking questions. So I, I couldn't have known, but after, once I asked that question and got that clarity, yeah, I was choosing that. Right. Um, so some other unhealthy signs, if it's hostility in a relationship and that can be verbal or physical, um, if there's dishonesty, if you feel like you need to lie to this person, you probably shouldn't be with them point blank period, you know, if there's disrespect and disrespect that can be, um, you know, that's, that, that can be subjective, you know, um, but just a, a general lack of respect as a human at the end of the day, you know, we have to, we have to value and respect our partners as humans first, you know, not just as a man or as a woman, right. But just as a human, they all humans are worthy and deserving of respect. And if you don't think that you can respect them, then you don't need to be with them. 
And if you don't feel respected by them, then you, you need, to, that's another sign you don't need to be with them. Um, or being overly independent, being overly dependent on the relationship. So sometimes not having your own identity, not having your own friendships, not having your own life outside of the relationship. That's a, that's unhealthy. Yeah. Um, if the, if there are any aspects of it are intimidating. So if you feel afraid of your partner, if you feel like you have to walk on eggshells or you can't speak up, right? That's, that's, that's a sign. Or if you're, if you're, if you feel like your partner shuts down because they, they feel like they can't get a word out because you're just eh, all the time, right? That's a, that's a sign that might be unhealthy. And then obviously, like I said um, earlier, any type of physical or sexual abuse, I do want to add, you know, any type of substance abuse as well, because if somebody is using substances, drugs, or alcohol in excess, they're not thinking, they're, they're not themselves, you know, and I'm not sure how much you guys know about addiction or, or what, what your thoughts are on it, but addiction is a disease, right? So like when, when, when we talk about drug addiction, when we talk about alcohol abuse or drug abuse, substances that we put in our bodies in excess, it has the ability to change our brain chemistry, right? And individuals who are, who do suffer from the disease of addiction, they, their ability to make clear decisions is, is impaired, not not just when they're under the influence, but from however long of their substance use, right? So if this person had, if you have a substance abuse issue or if they do, you know, that there might be some unhealthy aspects in the relationship, those things just might manifest. Mm. Um, any, any, I know this is a lot. So, <laughs> um, so any, any questions about the unhealthy ones and where we're going to go into the healthy, cause I think it's important because I think our culture, we, we, we hyper-focus on negative things, right? So we, I think we know, I think, I don't know if any of these were a surprise to any of you, right? So we generally know the unhealthy ones. So we're going to talk about the healthy ones as well. Um, but any, any thoughts about these before we, before we move forward? <laughs> No, I mean, I think those are pretty, you know, spot on, because even if you didn't know the actual name for whatever it is, you knew, you know, I mean, you always you know, know the experience. Phone. Absolutely. And like mm-hmm. Jenna said in the, in the chat, she says, you know, if you have to check his phone or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever, then it's definitely unhealthy. It's not for you. Because right. that's exhausting. Who want to do that? I don't, I don't want to have to. No. <laughs> I'm no. trying. I got too many other things to do. I just, I just don't have it in me, you know? Right. And, and I can't say that I was always that way. There was a time when I did have it in me. I had all the time in the day. Let me see your phone. Let me see that. Let me see that. Or I wasn't even asking. I was just sneaking, right? You know, so check, being able to check ourselves and being honest with ourselves about like what, what we're willing to do and what it is that we want. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> like whoo yep <laughs> all yep. of the things all of those things um so I'll since I'm here I'm just going to go into you know some of the healthy aspects of a relationship and this can be you know in romantic or in um in, in platonic friendships and family relationships so compromise um that this person is willing to to meet you halfway or you're willing to meet them halfway you have your own friends your own life there's some support consistency you have your own hobbies your own interests if there are compliments in a relationship there's generally respect friendship privacy choices and options you know so so I have the freedom and the liberty you know to to do to engage with this person or not to right you have your own space there's encouragement honesty there's some equality um and and love right and it doesn't mean that you have to be in love with the person but generally you love them as a human and if you're a believer you know where we're called to love all right so like loving this person and if you if you love them then that respect should be right there you know so not wanting to not wanting to harm them or hurt them or treat them unkindly you know so keeping those as as the foundation um we have a few others when we talk about like healthy relationships. So we talk about red flags. So some green flags is that this person supports your personal growth. Um, they practice self-care. They're self-reflective. They've had long-standing relationships. They can practice empathy, vulnerability. They, they have some sense of spirituality. They're pretty self-sufficient. They communicate openly. They honor your boundaries and they, they have a sense of self-responsibility. Um, and then over here, it's just kind of like the healthy relationships wheel, which I, which I'll get into in a second, but I'm, I'm wondering from the, what I've shown so far with the aspects of a healthy relationship, does anything jump out to you guys as far as like, dang, like I never realized that how important that was to me, or I, I think I need more of that. Anything jumping out to anyone as you're, as you're viewing these? 
I know for me, it's definitely about um, setting healthy boundaries mm-hmm. in all, not just in my relationship, but just in all aspects of my life, because sure. I feel that, you know, at times I get, um, you know, like caught up in trying to help everyone mm-hmm. and, and people pleasing. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I'm not because I'm like, oh, okay, that's fine. I'll help you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, knowing that I'm dead tired. Mm-hmm. I want to go home and lay down. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, you know, I'll come help you. I'll, I'll do it, but I'm not filling my cup. I'm just sure. Like, you know, pouring from my cup and, and not refilling it. So I've Absolutely. learned to kind of just like, okay, slow down, Chantrice. Like, mm-hmm. pause. <laughs> that's their issues. <laughs> Are their issues? And they're going to be there tomorrow. If you can help, then mm-hmm. help. But if not, it's okay to say, look, I don't have the capacity for that today. It's not saying that I don't want to help or that I'm not here to listen, but just in this moment, I, I can't do it. Absolutely. And it's, and that's okay. Right. And, and when we, when by rescuing people, we render them helpless. Right. So like if we're, if we are constantly, and that's not my quote, that, that's Dr. Henry Cloud's quote, the author of boundaries. Right. But like, if we constantly, if we do rescue them, right. Then what are we saying about their ability? What are we saying about their, their want, their, their, the need for them to rely on God, right? And then two, what are we saying about their own sense of self-sufficiency and agency, right? We cripple people. And it's nothing wrong. It doesn't mean that you're unkind or that you cut everybody off. But like you said, you do it when it's realistic for you. You do it when you can and communicate, you know, when you can. And the reality is, is that you say no enough, people gonna figure it out and they're gonna be okay. And your phone won't stop ringing this much and you won't stop feeling stressed out, right? And over. <laughs> all I had to say that's all I had to say two simple (laughs) letters oh I'm why not they learn this you know so so it's it's super super important just giving yourself the the permission to um to not be someone else's rescuer um none of our last names are Christ you know so um they be okay (laughs) I'm wondering (laughs) is anything else coming up for um for you all as far as like some of the the green flags or our aspects of a healthy relationship anybody else see something that's jumping out to them that they feel like they they didn't realize was as important but now like oh okay I can understand that or just anything you can put it in the chat if you don't want to take yourself off mute yep And while um, if anybody is responding or sharing, I'll I'll go on to this right side. So um, this is this is a wheel that I share pretty frequently in sessions, and I don't really do a lot of couples work, but a lot of times my clients who I'm seeing individually, they're in relationships. Um, so you know, this is just something that I share with them. And as, as I noted earlier, respect is it has to be the foundation of any relationship, whether it be platonic, professional, romantic, friendships family relationships, respect has to be there. Um, and, and of course, a big part of that is self-respect because a lot of times if we, if we don't really, if we've never learned self-respect or learned how to practice self-respect, we won't really be able to, um, to know when we're being disrespected by someone. We won't really be able to read that or, or to know how to respect somebody else, right? So this is, it, it can sometimes be tricky because sometimes many of us, we might be survivors of, of childhood abuse or dysfunctional families or, you know, just like a lot of things that we grew up in certain environments and we just don't know. And we don't know what we don't know, you know? So we get into these, we, we become adults. We, we turn this age and just like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm grown now. That's what am I supposed to do? Nobody taught me how to do this, you know? Um, but ultimately being able to, as we grow and learn, learn from those experiences we start to realize like oh that's what it means it's not okay for somebody to talk to me that way it's not okay for somebody to to put their hands on me it's not okay for you know my my time to be controlled or any of those things you know you start to learn those things um Vivian said I needed this model for green flags years ago yes right because we don't always see it we we're inundated with like don't do this don't do that and if you're doing this and if you and it's like all right well what am I what should I be looking for right because we have all these this list this long list of no's but left nothing that really shows you what it means when when something is going well um so with with this one some of the the around after respect is the foundation you know you want to look at accountability safety and relationship and and that can be emotional physical verbal safety um honesty support cooperation trust so these are just like just just general aspects and I think and we're obviously we're all women on here and I'm I'll be the first to say that growing up teenager early 20s I had a list 
you best believe I had a list. Oh, he got to be this. And he got to be this. And all these different things that we say we want. And we, we forget some of these, these, these really important qualities just in the, in the essence of the relationship. Right. And I, I say to my husband, you know, like, we, like, cause we, we started out friends and, and after a while, and I'll tell you guys, she's really quickly how I, how I realized I'm sitting in therapy one day. And I'm telling my therapist, I'm like, oh, well, this person, oh, I don't know, I ain't worried about him. And this person, I ain't worried about him. And I said, you know what? I wouldn't mind losing any of them to like, you know, be with Brian, but I wouldn't even want to lose Brian's friendship to be with any of them. And I was like, oh crap, I like Brian. It was like this aha moment because of what the relationship represented to me, you know? And like, in a lot of ways, he did meet a lot of my list, but the way that we entered each other's lives, it wasn't, it wasn't under the terms of like a romantic relationship, you know? So, so I say all that to say, sometimes we have to, I wouldn't say throw out the list completely because those things are, they can be important, right? We have to be flexible with it, but we have to be open-minded and, and to look at all the other aspects of what we want to exist within, you know? So it's one thing for this person to have all these qualities for him to be tall, dark, handsome, have money, blah, 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 and all these different things, but he a liar, right? Or he, he's selfish, <laughs> You know, right. or he don't, he doesn't, you know, he's not willing to, to protect me and, and maybe not like physically protect me like violence, but like if we're having a conversation and his mom is over talking me, he doesn't know what it means to like, you know, have asked for his mom to, 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 to give me some space to, to communicate or whatever the case might be. So being able to, to, to understand the other aspects of, um, what it means to, to just be present in a healthy relationship. And then the other piece, when it comes to self-accountability, are we practicing these things? Are we contributing these things to a relationship? You know, so when it comes to going back to the list, we say we want all these things. Are we all those things? Are we doing those things? Are we willing to do those things? You know, so that's, a, to me, that's a part of that. Sometimes that toxic femininity that, that the culture promotes is just like, oh, he got to do this and he got to do that. And it's like, all right, all that's fine and well, but what are you doing, right? Are you at a place where you are grounded and you're stable and you're well enough to be able to receive a person in a relationship like that? And what makes you think that if you aren't that he's going to want you you know so so and then obviously I'm talking about heterosexual relationships right and and whatever other choices people make but ultimately are you who you want to be with right mm. so so that that's 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 that about you know healthy and unhealthy it's just kind of like knowing and understanding the signs being able to see them but then also knowing what are you contributing to the space because we don't we don't we're not perfect you know, so that's, that's this segment. Um, did you have, um, we already talked about what a situation ship is. Um, I just have like a few quick tips on, you know, like some ways to get free, but, um, yeah. Sean Trust, I know you made, you probably had some other questions and we can do those as well. I'll review these briefly and they, they it might come up in your questions as well. So we can kind of like go back and forth, but, um, just, these are just some quick tips. So getting clear about what you want in a relationship. If you want a boyfriend, then you need to be clear about you want a boyfriend. If you, okay, if you date in multiple people, then be clear about dating multiple people. If you, you know, okay, with just talking and getting to know some Somebody and not worried about you going somewhere that all none of the it's no wrong way but it's just important for you to get clear about what you want right once you get clear about what you want get clear about what you want to get clear about communicating that to the person that you're in relationship with right or the people that you're in relationship with so if you are dating you know multiple people you ain't married you ain't in, you ain't exclusive with anybody you you have to be clear be have some transparency like hey you're not the only person I'm dating right now I am I'm not having sex with anyone but I am you know entertaining other people right now just get honest about that right and be okay with accepting whatever their response might be right you know, so if, if they say, well, I'm not comfortable with that, or I'm, I'm going to, you know, take myself out of the lineup because I'd rather not be a part of that, then you got to respect that choice, right? 
Number three, I said, build and grow in your relationship with God or your higher power. Like that's important, right? Because you, we, a lot of times we idolize relationships. We idolize, you know, these human relationships. We idolize being a wife. And a lot of people capitalize off of that, right? Like go get your Boaz and I'm the, no shade to any of them, right? But a lot of times we over, we hyper-focus, we over-focus on these human relationships. And, and a lot of times it's because we have this innate, we, we're human, so we, we're wired for connection right but we have this 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 need this longing this desire to be wanted and to be loved and depending on as far as the faith that I follow I was loved and wanted before I even existed you know so getting in touch with that and even though like I said I've been Christian my entire life but I had to learn that and come to an understanding like why am I why am I chasing this person and, and asking to be chose by him when God already chose me you know so so number three tip is just really growing in your relationship with God um number four is to grow in self-awareness so a big part of that is just meeting understanding how you've maybe contributed to the relationships in the past either healthily or unhealthily how your qualities or your expectations or whatever it is that you're bringing how it might be adding to your current condition right and sometimes Sometimes you can do this through just self-reflection, inner work, therapy, however it is that you do to learn more about yourself, because a lot of times we'll externalize the problem and guys, they, men ain't nothing and all men are this and all, all these different things, but we have to look at ourselves. Um, Number five is to really understand your values and how your life may or may not be aligning with those values, you know, so if you say you want something or if you say these things are important to you, well, what are you, what have you done and what are you doing to, to, to live that and to walk that out and to make sure that these things are, you know, and imp actually important to you. Um, number six, I think this has been a, a consistent theme is communicate communicate, communicate, communicate with your partner, right? Our partners, this is where I am. This is what I want. Um, and again, be okay with walking away in the event that you need to, in the event that you, you don't get what you want, right? So if they say, hey, I'm not, that's not where I am. That's not what I want right now. You got to be okay with accepting that. And then um, finally, just like being honest, oh, two more, be honest with yourself about the realities of the relationship and the implications. So I just kind of, um, name that as well you know like once you communicate you got to be honest like all right this is what we've been doing he not ready to change or she's not ready to change what's going to happen if I say yes if I if I just keep it going right then you might have another few months or years even of it being the same thing what's going to happen if I walk away oh I'm gonna miss him or we ain't gonna be able to do this no more you got to just get real with that and and it's it's a hard it's it's hard it's hard letting go because you get used to something we're creatures of habit so once we get used to it it's just like that like it's gonna be too much to start all over and all these different things but being real and honest with yourself and then like I said finally just being okay with walking away if that person doesn't want the same thing as you um so those are, are just kind of like some 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 quick tips and again none of us are are naive to what this is to what situationships are in unhealthy relationships so like I said I'm no expert right like this is just me sharing my experience strength and hope my you know what I've gone through on top of what I've learned clinically and psychologically and, and academic and academics all these different things and just being a human right so some of these things you might be doing this and like Edie is still not working okay sis well let's 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 go back to the drawing board right you know but maybe some of these might might um just 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 come in and if you notice none of this is really external right it's not like oh well go read this and go do it's not it's not it's a lot of times it's not outside of us right I have this 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 realization and quote right we date and mate at the level of self-awareness self-acceptance and self-worth that we're at right Right. We date and mate at those levels. So if I don't think so well of myself, if I'm if I'm still at a place where I'm struggling with with self esteem or low self acceptance and all those different things, then I'm probably going to take whatever comes my way because I don't think so highly of myself, right? But once I once I do whatever work I need to do internally, healing from past hurt, you know, dealing with my childhood, growing in my relationship with God, when I do that internal work, I'm like, you know what? I ain't got to deal with this. Let me get up out of here uh-uh you what's that what's the, the video say the tiktok oh you ain't got to worry about me we we have this newfound this newfound sense 
of, of value for ourselves. And it's not just self-love, right? Because a lot of times people talk about self-love, self-love. And yes, that's important, but we have to have self-acceptance first. We got to accept us. We got to self-awareness and self-acceptance. I got to see myself and accept myself right? And self-love, it's, it's, a, it's an ongoing battle. Some days I don't feel so great. Uh, and it, and I, I, I might love myself, but I'm like, I look kind of crappy, you know? So, so that, that force to, to always love, it's not that it might not always be there in the way, in the way that we, we desire for it to be that self-love, but that self-awareness, self-acceptance, that's that start. And if I'm, if I'm growing in self-worth and self-acceptance, then I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little more um, discerning about how I allow you to treat me, about what mess I allow to stay in my life, about who I'm involving myself with, about what I'm going to allow while I'm in relationship with someone, you know? Um, so again, all of this, it, it starts, I'm, I'm really big on that internal work, you know, because if, if we're constantly externalizing, the, you, everybody, so what you think? You, you the common denominator in all this, and you think it's everybody else too. No, <laughs> you know, and I'm talking about me first, right? Like these are just things that we that we have to learn. And sometimes my clients they don't like to hear it, you know, because they come in, they like, well, this person, this and this. well, what you do? You know, how how is it that these things keep on happening to you? What you got is something to sign on your forehead, you know. So so I just really encourage um self-honesty. <laughs> Um, getting real with you and 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 doing the work and, and it's it's not easy I'm not gonna sit here and slip in your face and lie to you it, it, it isn't some days it's really hard um, and and we want to blame and and we might be able to point to the factors the conditions that led to that like oh well my mom she ain't never do this and my dad wasn't there and this and this and my sisters and all we can we can yeah those things are real and those things are valid and now it's my responsibility to do something about it right so either we we're we're not victims we we are we sometimes we can be willing participants so um so that is all for for this and and the end I was just going to talk about my book a little bit and you know tell you ladies how if you want to purchase it how you can do that um but uh Sean Trust if you had any other questions I'm I'm definitely open um if you want to do those now yeah, no, I think you you pretty much flowed into, you know, each of those questions because it was really about, you know, healthy versus unhealthy and then mm -hmm. how to kind of break free from that and like what, you know, what we can do and stuff that's, you know, hindering us and, and holding us back. Absolutely. You know, it's important what you said, you know, about just doing that self-check, right? Because we want that self-accountability. Mm -hmm. We're not able to look at ourselves and be like, is it me? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Was it? <laughs> maybe i did do maybe maybe you know, right. right but yeah it's just and i know it's, it's so hard to you know like you want we always want to be like oh well this person they said this mm -hmm. and this is what they did to me so that's why i felt the way i did but it's like well no i don't have to listen to that i don't have to hold on to that right i have to let sure. it go yeah. because what purpose is that doing to serve me mm -hmm. what is it doing for me is it helping me or hindering me Regress or not, or am I regressing and going back to that place that I was before, where I'm supposed to have that growth to continue sure. to move forward and to move on and to let it go? Right. Yeah, you have all good, 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 good nuggets. <laughs> I am glad. I am glad. I see. I see. Marcia just joined us. I don't know if she, um, if she wanted to chime in at all, um, but I do want to just kind of like ask any of the other ladies who are on the line, like, do you guys have any? any thoughts or anything to add or any questions, um, any questions for me? Yeah, I mean, ladies, feel free. I mean, you can put it in the chat if you don't want to come off the mute. Um, I know it was a lot of information to kind of was. all good <laughs> information, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I love that chart that you had, you know, with the, the green flags, mm -hmm. because I think it's so important. And, you know, we always see the red flags, but we never mm -hmm. see the yellow or the green, you know, like mm -hmm. what is that in between? Because sure. it's just red. Nope. you know all the stuff that are that are going good that we should be looking for maybe absolutely for ourselves before it actually gets too red right. that we you know that we need to see or need to be aware of and we don't always get to get that so that was good sure sure yeah. absolutely absolutely anybody questions comments <laughs> Hey, ladies, so while everyone is trying to gather themselves, I just yes. want to thank my sis so much for um, coming on tonight. I can't wait to listen to this replay. Um, I know she was dropping some gems about unhealthy relationships. How's everyone feeling? Talk to me in the chat. 
Happy Friday Eve. I'm coming to you live from Charlotte. I hope you're enjoying the conference. That's so awesome. That you oh my God, the know. conference is going so good. You know, TDJ always brings such, such a good message. And all the speakers today have been so phenomenal. My awesome. spirit, like I'm overflowing. It's, awesome. it's overflowing. And I just can't wait to get back and to deliver such a powerful conference next week for everyone who'll be in attendance. Ladies, please don't forget that the um, Faith Focus and Finish Strong anniversary, two-year anniversary is actually Saturday, but we will be celebrating next week for our Living Free experience. It will be April the 7th through the 9th. So if you have not gotten your tickets yet, the team will be dropping the link in the chat so you can go ahead and grab a ticket so you can bring a friend and there's a special cold sisterhood for all the community members to get a discount and we also will be giving away a free ticket um tonight nice. um so if the special guest um miss Lynn, would you like to uh, propose a question for the audience so we can give away a ticket based on the conversation let's see if they was listening <laughs> um oh that's hard because like we we were we were conversing it was a chat so let me think about it um what is let's see I guess we can just do it this way what is one um just give me one example of um of an well let's say this what's one way that you can um navigate a, a, a situation ship. What's, what's one of the ways that you learned tonight? And you can put it in the chat. Communication, Jeanette, she got it. <laughs> it. Yes, Jeanette. Woo! Yes, that's the biggest one. <laughs> and Jeanette, I will, I can um, reach out. Jeanette, what state are you in? If you don't mind me asking. Maryland, okay. So, um, the American Counseling Association, they're kind of tricky, right? So even though um, my practice is virtual, I can only provide services to the individuals in the state in which I'm licensed. So right now I'm only licensed in Pennsylvania and uh, my license for um, for Delaware is pending because it's, it's just a lot of red tape and it's, right. it's a mess, right? But, you know, I got I to gotta follow the ethics of my board, right? So unfortunately, if you are in, if you are not in Pennsylvania, I cannot take you on as a client. I'm sorry, but I will put in the chat um, a really good directory that I am listed on. And I have a lot of other colleagues who are listed on there. And I think I do have some, um, some therapist friends who are in Maryland. Give me some, um, I can look, I can look at my directory and let you guys know, but I'm going to put in the chat a really great directory called Therapy for Black Girls. Um, and it's, it's, it, it's, it's tight. It's spelled just that how it sounds, therapy, F-O-R, Black Girls. Um, so on that site, you can put in your uh, state that you reside in or your zip code. And then they will generate therapists near you um, and you can identify if you want somebody to take insurance and what uh, areas you want to spend, what areas you want therapy and all those different things. So um, definitely a good one. Um, and then this is another one, cliniciansofcolor.org. So definitely I want to emphasize making sure you find somebody in your state because you don't want to, you know, waste your time or reach out to someone. And the reality is that a lot of people don't know that. And I always feel so bad turning people away because they're like, oh, I'm in West Virginia or I'm in Vermont. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I can't take you on, you know? So it, it, it is, um, it's something that it seems like legislation is trying to trying to change because of the pandemic and because of the mental health crisis that we're in. So they are trying to, but they haven't yet. So until then, um, Pennsylvania and almost Delaware are where I can see clients. That's all right. We're very, very thankful for those, you know, that information, because sometimes it is hard to find, you know, therapists or yeah, you know. And somebody that looks like you. It's, it's so important. Representation is so, so important. Um, 
So if you don't mind, I'm going to share this one last um, slide. And like I said, if you guys, so you can, um, you know, just find out more for me. You can go on my website, www.edrking.com. Um, and there you can just kind of like keep up to date with, you know, me. If you have a friend that's in Pennsylvania, that's how they can get connected to me. If they want to find, if they want to have me as their therapist. Um, and then my Instagram is therapy with Edie. I will be honest, full disclosure, I don't post on my social media as much as I would like, or as much as I could. I'm not going to should myself, but I just don't as much as I could. But I do have a lot of content on there um, from a time in my life when it was more realistic to post. So you can follow me there at Therapy, Therapy with Edie. I'm not on Twitter or TikTok. I'm on, I have a Twitter. It's old, but I don't use that. Um, but that's how you can stay in contact with me. And also, if you would like to purchase my book, it is there. The book is $20. And what I can do, I'll send Marcia um, a code, a 10% off code for those of you who are here tonight. Um, but the book is called My Peace is Most Important. It's a 31-day devotional. Um, and like I said, it's a, it's a reading and a journal. So we talk a lot about looking at yourself. We talk a lot about self-awareness today. And this is one of the ways that you can start to do that. So um, when I when I started writing this book, it wasn't even a, a book. It was me journaling, right? And a lot of it is about my experiences and getting out of that three year situation ship that I told you all about. You know, so it started as that, and then it, it it evolved into this thing. And I'm like, oh, well, this can be a book, you know. So I talk about my relationships. I talk about family. I talk about work. I talk about my relationship with God and what it means to what it has meant to grow into this healthier version of myself. So. Um, for those of you who are interested, um, definitely you can purchase it on my website. It's also on Amazon. So whichever, um, whichever route you want to go with that, but, um, edrking.com, you can purchase it in Marcia. I will send you the code tonight. I just have to set it up on my website so that you all can use it. Um, any, that's all I have. Do you guys, what questions do you have or, or anything else? Um, I know it's a little late. So where, where are we at with this? Well, so I know for me, I just like, I can't say thank you enough. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, definitely. Yes. People are, is, you know, the floor is open to ask questions. Um, if not, we will kind of wrap it up because like, you know, I want to respect everybody's time. Um, you know, it is work night. We still got one more day. <laughs> one more day. <laughs> <On the> weekend. <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you um, for mm -hmm. all the helpful information, you know, and yeah, hopefully people will reach out, you know, use your Instagram girl. Cause I am, I'm trying <laughs> now, now that I'm going to resign, I'll have two jobs instead of three. I'll, I'll have more of an opportunity. 